Welcome to Lemonade Learning, a refreshing look at learning today. We serve up high impact practical strategies alongside honest and energizing stories to help educators. Make the most of your moments, lead and learn with purpose and craft lifetime lemonade from the sweets and sours of education. Join us for a glass. Hey everybody, it's Bree and Lainey. Welcome. So excited. We have my friend Evo here. Now Evo, um, I speak American and mm. when you say your name, it's going to sound much prettier. And so I'm going to let you introduce yourself if you don't mind. Sure. Well, yeah, my name's uh, Evo and uh, I don't speak American. <laughs> That's okay. I don't speak American either, Evo. I speak Texan and it's a totally <laughs> different thing than, than all of that. So, Oh my goodness. Well, Evo, you and I know each other from um, the interwebs, from Twitterverse, and you're just amazing. Um, you're a teacher. You are you know, leading the charge of an international movement for student agency. And I don't want to mess up your bio, but I would love it if you could share just a little bit about what you're doing and what you're excited about right now. And then we'll get into the sweet and sour. Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, there's not really anything else to add. Like you've pretty much stolen my thunder there, Lainey. Thank oh, you very much. Oh, sorry. Well, so, I feel uh, like you're being you want me to leave now? Or uh, stick yeah. around, like or jump to. We it. want to keep you, and you're being very humble. Um, tell us, like, some of your projects that you're working on. I was a part of the last episode of one of your projects, and we can just maybe give a little teaser about that. We'll talk more about it during the episode, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, so I've been in education for 20 years. Um, I'm currently in Dubai. I've been in Dubai for 14, in the UK for six, and. I started off as a design technology teacher, always been a bit of a tinkerer, really. And that's kind of led me down the route of innovation and then and then kind of gone down the route of innovation and design thinking. And then really exercised that, that type of philosophy in my own life. So taking risks, starting new things, letting things fail, letting maybe something succeed connecting with people and um obviously you managed to, to bump into you in the virtual space laney and now with brie as well and it's just been really cool um fortunately for me over the past 12 months i've managed to navigate things where the more time i had because we, we were remote learning right I took that time to personally develop and learn how to use YouTube. And now I host a show very similar to what you guys are doing on YouTube and connect people to each other. Yeah, uh, agency stuff is cool. Um, there's a few things this year, big things that are happening um, that are going to be quite transformative. So, um, yeah, 2021 is going to be yeah, a big one. Yes, it will. I, I do want to dig into more to your project. Bree, you have any questions before we jump into sweet and sour? No, I'm I'm loving this like very calm and cool, like, yeah, I mean that's cool and this is stuff that's kinda it's kinda here and all of that. So I, I'm I'm again appreciative of your your humble nature and I'm truly excited to to unpack some of this as we as we go through it. So with that, I'll let uh, I'll I'll let Lainey move us forward. Well, just tell us about your sweet and sour. Like that's what we like to start with because we always feel like that kind of gets us um, knowing what's going on in your life. And so that's like a it can be quick, and then we can jump into some other things like Bree said, unpack. But you know what's what's going on for you? What's sweet? What's sour? Um, what is sweet is I get lovely people like you guys actually wanting to connect with me and do things which is really cool um on apple on um twitter he created this list of 50 like culture change agents um and he released it maybe four days ago and and i was on it and i was like whoa this is like crazy and so i got a bit of recognition there and then recently I've been invited to do uh, an Ed Talks Live, which is this, this YouTube talk show that I started. 
um, in EduTech Middle East, which is broadcast out of Saudi Arabia. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting all these little bits of people kind of shining a little bit of light on me, which is just really cool. So that's very that's a very sweet part of my professional life, my personal life. I am fortunate to be a, a father of two uh, beautiful children. Um, and we, again, we live in a very nice part of the world. Um, yeah, I've got a lot to be thankful for. So um, life is sweet for me. Um, and I, I deflect, generally deflect things that are not good for my energy. Yeah. So not in a negative way. I'm, I, I, I just kind of pass it over. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that and so on. So the sour bit is hard for me because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So, I don't really know how to respond to it. <laughs> can I just jump in really quickly? Because when I think of Evo, I think of, now this is an American reference, so forgive me, but you might be familiar with the show Friends. And there's a yeah. GIF. So the, our American <laughs> listeners will know this. But there's a <laughs> GIF where Ross and his friends are moving a couch up the stairs. And it's called Pivot, Pivot, because Ross is like yelling at them, I won't do it justice. But to me, that word is really you. You pivot. Like, you don't sit in the sour. You're just like, well, I'm going to just do this. This can be fine. This could be fine. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. The, the, it's funny because when the word pivot, pivot, people have been using this word pivot um, a lot over the over the last nine to 12 months, obviously because of the, the big changes. But you're right. I just kind of, I like change. And I like a lot. <laughs> I like a lot of change. Um, I recently started using um, a stock, an online stock platform to trade stocks. I'd never ever done it. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kind of give it a go. I've got a little bit more time on my hands, um, and it's and that's going well. So it, yeah, it's cool. Like I just, I don't mind, and I and I and I think I've been brought up to welcome opportunity but also to not wait for people to open doors but to find your own doors mm -hmm. you know if i consider that the the idea of youtube when i when i last saw my kids my students at the beginning of march there was absolutely no way I was going to have a YouTube channel. That was at the beginning of March. I spoke to my kids and said, I started an Instagram at the beginning of 2020 because I'm trying to understand what Instagram is because you guys talk about it and I need to be relevant if I'm going to be leading innovation. I still don't get it, but I'm trying. And then with what happened with the agency sessions where I was meant to come to the States, I was meant to come to your neck of the woods, both of your necks of the woods, actually. I was meant to come over to... Houston for an agency session and then I was meant to come over to uh, San Fran with Barbara Bray and uh, and then obviously that that couldn't happen because of the um, the health crisis and the pivot was well how do I serve these cool people that were going to fly in from different cities to to, to come and do um, these sessions how do I still serve that community, even though I'm not going to be able to see them face to face? And then that led me to go, well, let's try YouTube. Let's try live. So <laughs> it's like start a YouTube channel, understand how to broadcast live, try to broadcast live, enjoy it. And that was all in the one thing that I did. And then since then, I've just kind of gone, this is, this is cool. Like, I like it. And yeah, I think what you were saying before about um, the project, it will be going into season three. I know Lainey's going to be involved in it more. I have no doubt Brianna's going to be involved in it at some point. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, something that was kind of a bit of an accident, a little bit like that champagne effect is now led to, it's part of my planning, my weekly planning time. 
So if we don't seek opportunities, you you never know what, what you're missing out on, right? You know, you the kids call me a YouTuber now. I didn't ever think I would ever be it. I actually used to cringe at the term YouTuber. Now I'm just like, yeah, okay, well, I use YouTube, fine. So who knows, right? Who who knows? It's 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 a big world, yeah. and as things change, you can either be part of it, or and you choose that. That is, I believe, that's a choice. Are you going to be part of moving forward or not? It doesn't require money. That YouTube thing didn't require any money for me to do. To start the agency project required no money. I did it on Twitter. It's just whether you are motivated, whether you have nice people like you guys in 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 my life who want me to push myself, and then a little bit of that kind of self belief to be like, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna give this a go and see uh, see how it feels, you know. So yeah. For those who haven't had a chance to watch your YouTube channel, tell us a little bit about the format because I think it might be interesting for those who want to maybe broaden their perspective and kind of have a more global uh, connection to the education community. Sure. So, um, so Ed Talks Live is the format is like um, uh, an American. It's a it's an American talk show format where you have people coming on there's there's two main guests um that i kind of have a bit of a chit chat with there's there's one central topic that we we discuss and then i have this like backstage area which i call the staff room um where uh, additional educators kind of give their opinion on what has been discussed and then we end with a bit of a fun quiz which is part of the well-being side um the main aim is to help anyone who's viewing to be inspired by some of the ideas a little bit like a pd mm -hmm. but a bit more edu a bit more entertaining i guess and at the same time connecting with educators globally who might who may be in their space who they may want to um C continue further discussions with on twitter or or, or, or other platforms like um edspace um and, and expand this global network of education so it doesn't exist, you know, on your phone. It doesn't exist where, behind a tweet. It's exactly what you guys are doing here, right? We're, we're talking face-to-face. -face, we're listening to each other. We can – there's a vibe. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. You should – for anyone who's listening to this, if you're an educator, check it out. If you don't like it, DM me on Twitter <laughs> at Evo Hanan and tell me what you want me to change because I'm a very dynamic person. I'm a very reflective person and I want to serve people best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, so much of this is like, I have so many stories that are going on in my mind that are connecting to the things that you are sharing. And, um, the, the one that really jumps out at me first and foremost is my maternal grandfather was born before the depression and, and all of this and had eight brothers and sisters and a very large family. And he was in the middle and um, he was in an ice skating accident when he was um, 11 years old and fell in the ice and was there and it took a while for them to get to him. And so anyhow, long and short of it, he actually broke his hip, not just, you know, dislocated all of this. And, and at the, at that time, you know, in the thirties, this was not easily treated as it is now, I should say. And so this involved him living in a hospital for um, over a year without family there because they were, you know, back on the, on the farm working and doing all these kind of things. And so he, you know, only had letters to connect with everyone. And um, that was how his school was done. That's how he kept in contact with all of his family and all of these things. And as you were talking, you were talking about agency and you're talking about, you know, when all of these things that we didn't think we were going to do in March, you know, February, we suddenly found ourselves doing in March and in April. And it is that part where we you, you know, the saying never say never, right? We we always say that once it 
oh, I'm never going to do that. And then we find ourselves in this circumstance, like you were saying, where, okay, in order to connect with people, this is what I'm going to have to do. And this is what's going to bring me close. And, um, and I think that, th- that you are really leaning into that as a teacher. And, um, and so I, I kind of want to take all of that, you know, to explain and unpack a little bit more your, um, your agency project. So the agency thing for me, um isn't actually it's it's a fairly new thing because the word student agency i think the first time i heard it was on twitter and it was only maybe god like think back to november 2019 so like august 2019 And I remember somebody talking about student agency and I was like, I don't know what this is. And then people started talking a bit about it and people would put different slants on what it was. And I was like, oh, I already do that. I just don't call it agency. I call it choice. I just didn't call it. And I just didn't realize that actually I was already doing it. And that that led me down this path of, well, first of all, everyone should be doing it. And second, secondly, how do I create something that enables it to be more digestible to um, the everyday teacher? So I went about creating um, like an initiative called Agents for Agency, and I launched it on the 6th of November. I actually remember it, 6th of November, 2019. And it's based around the acronym of being an agent. So um, A stands for being active. So as a teacher, you are actively seeking your own professional development. So you're staying relevant because it's difficult for agents to be agents of agency if you're not relevant and you're not on the pulse yourself because the kids can't connect to you. G stands for um, Generation Z, so digging deeper into the needs of Generation Z and who they are and what sensitivities they have so we can serve them best. E stands for every child, which albeit that is something that's quite general anyway, but understanding that the 20 kids that you have do have different needs and that's why student agency is should be a lot more prevalent in classrooms rather than you know the one size fits all the n stands for new and innovative ideas as a teacher you don't have to have all the ideas but please be open to new ideas whether they come from you or students because that's what's going to enable agency that that is a driver for agency Um, and i would say the cornerstone of being an agent is T, which is developing trusting relationships. So the idea was, if you could create um, teachers who understood what it was to be an agent, uh, a, a pioneer of student agency, then, and essentially looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, as an agent for agency, it's the person in front of me whose needs come first, not my needs as a teacher if we can do that then agency just becomes commonplace it just becomes part of the conversation it's what do you want out of this this is our unit of work what do you how can you connect to this so it becomes relevant to you um and then uh i launched it i tried to be i mean it's it's an odd thing to say now because when I launched the agency project on Twitter, it was a launch. So I actually had people behind it. And I was like, guys, I want to launch it because I want it to make a wave. I want it to be something that actually people um, pay attention to. Um, so I recorded, um, there were 60 second videos, uh, black and white, to go with the whole agency bond kind of look. Uh, and I spoke about each one of the acronyms and and I posted one a week. Um, and then that led to, um, creating a, a, an agency, um, like chat, like a slow chat. Um, and that led to 
agency sessions, which so November the 6th, I launched it on Twitter. I think it was like December the 6th, we did the slow chat. And like December the 20th, I asked people if they would like to have a face-to-face discussion about it. And by the beginning of January or mid-January, I had launched Agency New York and Agency San Francisco. And then by February, they were full. So then I launched Houston. And then Toronto, which was with uh, Shay and Pav. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, it went from an idea to then becoming a like a phys- like having a physical manifestation in the real world within six months, and me traveling to the states to cities I've never been to to meet people I've never ever met before <laughs> because of an idea of me wanting to promote agency. I mean, this is the way an idea can unravel, right? And and I have paused on it. I do have to say, but. Um, I think with you guys, I might be bringing it back. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I think so, because it has been in my mind a little bit. Um, because what's happened is that then led to Ed Talks Live. But then Ed Talks Live didn't just relate to, it eventually didn't just relate to agency. It ended up just relating to topics and education. So that's just, that vehicle's kind of gone on its own road. But that agency project and, and 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 the big picture was to create the Agency 100, which was 100 global agents for agency and having them as part of this framework that drive this movement to say, in order for us to connect to kids and to allow them to thrive, listen to what they want first, you know, yeah. like, and, and so, you know, leading on to what you were then saying, Brie, about how how do you transfer that through a screen? To me, it's the opposite. A kid's in their bedroom. They're not in their classroom anymore. They're not in your classroom anymore. Agency is going to thrive when they're in their own environment. They're in their own comfort zone. So if anything, it should actually, it should be more, it should happen more naturally when they're at home than when they're in essentially a foreign environment, which is a classroom, right? It's not, not all classrooms are comfortable for kids and so on and so forth. And we, we, we generally are, are a little bit more easy with our thoughts when we're in a comfortable, especially in our home environment. So it's more to do with how can we, uh, to me, it's more to do with how can we promote um, children to connect their interests from home and in their environment to the tasks that you may set educationally. How do how does a teacher, how does Brianna bring those two together? So when they finish the project or unit, not only do they own it, they're excited to share it with you because it's like, I created this in my room or I did it in my garden or I hope that makes sense. (laughs) It does. And I just want to throw in my two cents because this is a week where I'm coaching a lot of teachers. And, and, And let me start by saying this is very easy for me to do when I'm not on the front lines. But what I say to them when they're saying to me, you know, Lainey, why are, why am I not getting engagement? I, one of my first questions is, have you asked the kids what they need? Have you asked them what they want? And, and it seems like, and again, bless our teachers who are on the front lines, but that's not coming to them immediately. Even teachers who gravitate towards student agency in pre-COVID world, it's it's something that we're having to kind of revisit. It's It's something that is deep within a lot of us, but it's something that we are not necessarily transferring. And I've talked about this before, Brie, I think you and I have talked about this before. The things that we knew were right in in our traditional settings didn't always transfer so easily into this other setting because we were just kind of thrown off our game. And so I think that this is a time to revisit this idea of um, agency. And so I I want people asking, you know, well, why do you have your camera off? Is there, that doesn't need to be an on the spot in front of everyone on the Zoom, but like a, a personal connection, like 
why do you not want to have your camera on? Just, just tell me and let's talk about it. And giving choice, you know, camera on, you choose. So I think that um, there's a lot of actual opportunity. And I love what you said about like in your natural environment, like this is where you could really thrive. So just wanted to throw that out there. I love that. Yeah. I think honestly, I think teachers would find it more uncomfortable in, in, in most regards than, than students because teachers, from what I can see, their comfort zone is their classroom. Yeah. So without that classroom, it's almost like, well, how am I going to be a teacher in my living room? I'm like, yeah, but the, you're the same person. <laughs> like, don't worry about the classroom. The kids don't have to. They don't have to be in front of you. They shouldn't have to be in front of you. You know, you're communicating the same kind of messages. Um, when I started remote teaching, the kids asked me, they're like, Mr. Hanan, can I go to the toilet? I'm like, you're at home. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to ask if you need to go to the toilet. That's a nice thing I respect. They then asked me, can I eat? I was like, honestly, guys, I've not really ever had the problem with people eating in class. I don't, but it's a hygiene issue in school. Yeah. So I get that. I'm like, guys, it's a hygiene issue, so you can't eat in class. But to me, I'm like, the kid's hungry, and they, and that's going to help them concentrate. I don't. So I'm like, guys, eat, eat whatever you want. In all honesty, I was brought up in a household where my mother was like, plates of food. She's like, you will never, you will never go hungry. You know what I mean? <laughs> so for me, it's like, definitely do not stop yourself from wanting to eat or drink. And at your home, it's your rules. So you eat and drink as much as you want. Just give me what. Just give me your commitment, so we can we can help this learning journey take place. I've never, I, I never had any issues with my remote learning, and if in fact my grades were higher in the term of remote learning, yeah, my grades were higher, and I and I can tell you the reason. I can tell you distinctly the reason why. The kids who are a bit more timid. Mm -hmm. well they didn't have to be yeah. so when you went into breakout rooms they're not with everyone else so they could be like Mr. Hanan I don't actually get this I'm like, so in class you don't want to say it but now when it's much easier it's easier because so all of a sudden the 25-30% of students who I wouldn't have necessarily thought were introverted all of a sudden I'm like oh actually they thrive in their own environment when no one's around <laughs> That's actually quite cool. And now I know that if you want to turn your camera off and I've given you the instruction, turn it off. Yeah. If that's going to help you concentrate, or if, like that's cool. My job isn't to watch you during the class. My job is to get you to thrive in the project that you're doing. That's my aim. It's, there's no other aim but for me to help you thrive. That is the number one aim for me. Yeah. Camera on, camera off. You want to... Mr. Hanan, can I log out and log back in 20 minutes later? Absolutely. That's going to help you. So much of that comes back down to like what your, what your outcomes are, right? Like of what, mm. what it is that you're wanting. Um, and I think that, that it is so very interesting because so I, I am a, a former English teacher. My undergrad is in literature. And, um, and, and when, you, when you were talking through agency and, and the connections and all those pieces in there, it reminds me so much of one of the major standards um, <clears throat> as an English teacher is inferencing. And how do we teach our kids to you know, read a text and then inference from that? And then as they get older, you know, we go from just inferencing, you know, emotions or things like that to then also using figures of speech and, and all these different elements um, that, that are used within literature. Right. And so I know particularly for me teaching Lois Lowry's The Giver in eighth grade to, to a group of students, one of the pieces that we had to unpack was uh, in that book, the apple turns, they're only seeing it in black and white. And then all of a sudden they see it in red. And so then we had to unpack the powerful images of, of what apples represent. We had to unpack you know, theories around color. We had to do all of those kind of pieces. And I say that because when, what we're doing, like what we would always say as, as English teachers within my department is we would talk about how we are asking our kids to have like a filing cabinet in their brain of what is important and what is not so that then they can identify and understand it. Right. Because even 
you know, you can read the sentence and you can understand, okay, it went from red to black or from, from black to red, but until you understand all of the other pieces in it, then it's, it, it takes on a whole different layer. Right. And I think that that's one of those things with agency is what you're really after is you're not doing what we do so often. And I'm going to pick on math, right? Is the, <laughs> of the word problem of math of like, I'm going to create some engagement or some agency around math by putting some sports figures name into this word problem. And that will suddenly make my kids interested in it. And the answer is no, it doesn't, right? Like that doesn't create just snubbing a pop star or a, a, you know, sports hero or a, um, you know, comic character or whatever into a problem that does not create agency. Instead, it's helping that student understand why it should be important to them. And for me, I've always told my children, my, my personal children that I'm responsible for all the time, my two personal children, I, I tell them, and I've always encouraged them, their first words were why. And, and I tell them, I'm like, that's the most important question you can ever ask. And it's not snarky. And it, it's, it's it, you need to know why is it important. You need to know why it doesn't work. You need to know why you should care. You need all of those things. And I think that that's often a missing element because as teachers, sometimes we don't take that time to explain why to our to our kids and in a, in a way that they will then turn and be invested in it, right? And I, I think that's because we get caught up in our why as teachers becomes the, well, because it's on our curriculum map and it's what we're supposed to do right mm. now. If that becomes our driving why, instead of, well, let me tell you how important inferencing is as a, as a reader. And, you know, I, I, I just, I think it's one of those pieces. For me, the most important thing as a teacher is to be incredibly curious and passionate about this topic that you're, you're, you're teaching. And when you have that, then you get to like overflow that into your students. Right. And so like, for me, again, like as an English teacher, I can connect anything to a book and I can get like really excited about it. My brother is a math teacher and he connects everything to math. And when we do that, that's when we're, we're creating that agency opportunity for, for kiddos. And, and I think that that's, like, it's not something we can go and buy off of the shelf, right? Like it's that, that bubbling up that, that we just, we get so excited about. And that's what we're after. We want our kids to be excited about the content that they're, they're, they're wanting and they're learning. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I've got a quick story about uh, the why that you said. Um, so I, I distinctly remember this. Um, I must've been 13 and it was a history class and we were learning about the Tudors in, in England in school, you learn about the monarchy. And I put my hand up and I was like, I don't understand why we're learning about the Tudors. And the history teacher like flew off his handle and sent me out of the classroom. And I was like, okay, so I got sent out of the classroom. And he's like, you know, don't be. And I was like, yeah, but I don't understand. Like, there's so many other things in history that I would love to learn about. Like, I'd love to learn about China, I'd love to learn about Egypt, I'd love to learn about what happened with the Romans. I don't get why I'm learning about the Tudors. I just don't get it. Um it's like because that because I said so. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. So I got into trouble, like I got into a lot of trouble for asking why. Yeah. And I remember when I first became a teacher and I, re- I remembered what happened and I was like, there will never be a situation where if a kid says, Mr. Hanan, why are we doing this? That I shouldn't be able to give them an answer that relates to their life. And if I can't, then maybe I should ask them, can you find a connection? Because without those personal connections, Absolutely. it could possibly be considered a waste of time. And that's not what I would want any of my students to, to feel in my class. And I don't think any other teachers should feel that way. Yes, I understand, you know, similar to what you said, there are things on the curriculum. If you've got that magic where you can connect those bits, like you were saying, to, to make things relevant to that, to that student as they grow up, it's like, you know what, you might not need algebra now, but put your hand up if you want to be a businessman, which... 
Put your hand up if you want to be a YouTuber. Well, anyone who runs business has to kind of use algebra because you have to you have to replace numbers with numbers that you don't know are going to happen. So these these you know so changing the x and y's and you know references in in, in English and so on and so forth to to make kids go. Oh, I didn't, didn't think of it that way. Yeah. Those five minutes of, of realization can change the next two weeks of your teaching if you're willing to help them make the connection. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. I'm I'm making a connection right now to when we're talking about connecting the why and and to their lives and things like that. And and Evo, earlier you mentioned introverts and how you're seeing in some of the um, remote learning some of the kids that you would have considered more introverts are actually um, really more engaged now. And it, that's something that I kind of learned as an online teacher is that, um, and I saw this in my district when we had an online program, was that we would have kids that teachers had kind of labeled as low performing or unengaged or disinterested. And then when they moved into online learning where they had all this choice, all this agency, right? These kids came alive. Like these kids were speaking in every, not speaking verbally, but typing in every discussion and actively participating because they had ideas to share, but they wanted to do it on their terms more in the comfort of their mm. home, like you said, um, you know, on their time frame, not like at this particular moment. Because one of the things I think about with introvert and extrovert is I'm not one or the other. It's, it's in the moment. Like, catch me. Today I'm feeling like an introvert at this time. And maybe. Yeah. Sure. Other times I'm feeling like an extrovert because you know what? I've got lots to say. And then other times I'm like, um, this is a hard day. Like I'm just going to come into myself and I'm just going to be as quiet and as to myself as I can. So I'm just kind of connecting all these things. And I just really appreciate um, this idea of agency. I think it's so important. And I think it would answer a lot of our uh, problems, a lot of our struggles right now. I want to piggyback on that too, because I think the other part that comes along with that is, is similarly, you know, not just introverts and extroverts, but it's also our, you know, from an accessibility standpoint. I mean, that was one of the things as a, as an English teacher, right. Trying to get kids to write, trying to get their thoughts that are inside their brain that, you know, it's every there, there's never a time that I haven't had a class of students and there be at least one that's like, oh, I hate writing, I hate reading, all of this stuff, right? And I'm like, no, 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 let's, 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 let's break this out. I don't have anything to write about. Oh my gosh, yes, you do. You know, and, and so it took, for me personally, it took having a lot of kids that had different needs and that had different strengths. And, um, you know, the first time that I was able to take a kiddo who, I had a really hard time. Like they could explain anything to me, but they were really struggling with putting that, those words down. Right. And then like seeing the power of voice recording or dictation or, or all of those things. And then like, suddenly they can't stop talking about it. Right. Like, cause they, they know the answers, but for some reason, you know, whether it's stress, whether it's difference of brain, um, you know, strategies or, or whatever it looks like, that they are, they struggle with that representation. And so giving them that chance, like, you know, and I, again, I'm kind of full circle going back to that conversation of like, when they're in the comfort of their home, they're talking about things, they're explaining information, how are they doing that? Right. And so then like tapping into that, you know, that piece for them. And, um, and then the other thing that I want to, you know, kind of make a little segue after, Lainey, you were talking about, you know, working with teachers and doing all that stuff. That's one of those things that we do when we're coaching is that we, we play off of those strengths that, that people have and, and what their interests are, right? Like when we're delivering professional learning, how many times do we then change that for like, okay, I'm going to give this example, but I'm going to give this example for, um, high school biology. Um, oh, that same, that same strategy, that same pedagogical, um, you know, principle that we're going to do. Okay. I can do that. But instead of high school biology, I've got some kindergarten teachers that have EL, you know, English language learners. Okay. I can do that. I'm going to give them an example of that. And we're creating agency within our teachers for them to be able to connect their practice with the information that's coming. And so you know, that's, that's this, this same concept amplified 
with your students, right? Like you're, you're, you, if you know enough and that's, I, I'm going back to you explaining your acronym of agent and, and Evo talking about T being that most important piece, that trust and that, that relationship. Like if you know enough about your people, whether they're tall or, or, or small or you, whatever they, whatever they've got going for them, if you know enough about your people, then you're able to look at them and know how you can better represent that. Like, are you explaining it as ice cream flavors or are you explaining it as, you know, sports heroes or whatever that looks like? I think so much of that is, is, is so important. And, um, you know, again, again, I'm coming back to like your very first piece where you were introducing yourself of like, this is stuff we do in the classroom all the time. Like we just didn't know the fancy name for it. And so it's, it's like relationship 101. And if you mm-hmm. care about your kids and if you care about your content, then this is pretty natural mm-hmm. and it's not, it's, it, it's not, it's, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's coming up with the way that they can do it, you know? And I think in, 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 in our times now where we're in a remote situation, how do you do it? Like you still got to teach your class. Okay. Well, I'm, I've got this, this camera thing that turns on that they can all, you know, okay, we're going to do that. We're going to do a FaceTime. Like it'll work again. Like I I just keep all the things that you've been sharing throughout today. I'm coming back to like, you know, you, you try something like it's design thinking 101, right? Like I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if this works. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to iterate, I'm going to tweak it. And then we're going to try it again. And, and so much of that Mm -hmm. is this, like, you got to be willing to try it. And then you got to be will, and, and in order to try something, you have to be willing for it to either fail or succeed. And most often with either one of those answers, there's still something for us to tweak in there to make yeah. it better. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Very cool. So, so Evo, I know it's like past your bedtime, not to, say, <laughs> not to make you sound like a child, but this is, I just... uh, I've only just woken up guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> For, for our listeners, Evo is in, I think we said you're in Dubai. I don't know if we said that pre-recording or not, but you're, I'm in California. You're 12 hours ahead of me, 10 hours ahead of Bree. So we appreciate you staying awake uh, late into the evening to have this conversation. I want to give you an opportunity to have any last thoughts that you want to share because I'm excited to see what you do next. And I, I would love any opportunities to collaborate because I have really, and I'll just say this, I don't know if I said it clearly before, but I've always been a big believer in making global connections. But I think there was a time where I maybe backed off of that a little bit on social media and connecting with you and others has really rejuvenated that in me. And I feel like I've really connected in a much deeper way with my Twitterverse in since since we went into lockdown. And so I'm really grateful for that. And I just am excited to see what you do next. So that's I'm gonna land this plane. Um <laughs> any any final final things you want to share before we let you go? Uh yeah, just I just wanna say for any teachers, um educators who are listening to this, please take it easy on yourselves. Mm-hmm. Like you have entered a profession because you want to educate the next generation. And there are days, remote learning or face-to-face, that are tough. Take it easy. You know, Rome was not built in a day. Um, Whatever you're doing, you are helping people progress. You are helping students progress. Believe in your ability to be able to communicate positive messages. Uh, Stay afloat, connect to people. And good luck. Um, if you need to connect with myself, obviously you can find me on Twitter. But um, yeah, whatever you're doing, keep doing it and stay positive, guys. Good luck to you guys. Lainey and Brianna, thank you very much for this opportunity to connect. There's some really big things I'm going to share with you guys after we go off uh, um, that will come up. So for, yeah. Um, So, yeah, watch this space, guys, if you're listening. But uh, bar that, thanks again. And all the best for 2021, people. Yay. It sounds like we have some exciting news. So just for our listeners, if there's something big that we can add to the show notes, in addition to ways to connect with Evo, um, if we can update that with anything once it's um, free to share, we will put that in the show notes. So excited. Excited. Yeah, really Thank you cool. so much, Eva. This has been wonderful. I am like totally 
fired up after, after this conversation, this has been super, super wonderful and, um, and incredibly helpful. I mean, I love your, I love your, your very down to earth advice of just, just try it, you know, and, and remember that we're in this for kids and we're in this because we want to help kids understand the information that we know. And there's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. There's just the, the only wrong thing is to not share. And, and so I think that that's the, you know, that's the piece that I've definitely taking from today's conversation with you. And, um, and I just, I, I am super appreciative of, you know, that transparency of knowing that we're going to try things. Um, and, you know, again, like if we go back to, if you've been in the classroom for more than a year, um, I'm sure you go back and you say, okay, well, that didn't work the way that I thought it was going to work. So I'm going to try something different this time. Or, you know, as a secondary teacher, I tried something different every class period, it seemed like. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and so I think that you know, we, we, we've constantly, we've got to ask why, and then we've got to try, and then we've got to ask why again. And, um, and I think that that's a, a pretty good summary of what I'm taking away from today's conversation. So thanks so much for joining us. And- Thanks, we appreciate Evo. you staying up late. And, <laughs> and thanks to our listeners. And we will be back with another episode soon. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed this batch of Lemonade Learning, please check out our website, LemonadeLearning.us, for more resources. Be sure to subscribe today so you don't miss out on future lessons, laughter, or lemonade. And if you're feeling really generous, please go to Apple Podcasts to submit a review so other educators know the value. One last thing. Learning and Lemonade are best together. So please connect with us on social media using the hashtag LemonadeLearning to share your story. Plus, we're always looking to give away stickers and swag.